Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Monacani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the outpouring of the Spirit that Christ promised at Ascension. Now it is within us and amongst us. Oftenly we fail to respond to the promptings of the Spirit in our lives. For those times that we have failed to do so, let us ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I had failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you. you. We bless you. We adore, adore you. Glorify you. We glorify you. We give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the faiths of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven, like a rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterances. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this time the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt 
and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You take away their breath, they die returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord send, send forth, forth your spirit, spirit and, and renew the face, face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit, and, and renew, renew the, the face, face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we celebrated the ascension of Jesus. He promised his followers that he would send them the Holy Spirit and that they would be filled with the power from on high. Theirs and ours and our waiting is over. Today, with the whole church, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. This is not something that happened long ago to other people. It is happening today, here and now. 
Some years ago, I visited a friend who owned a talkative parrot, and I loved it. A few months later, I paid Coco and my friend a visit. But this time, Coco was very quiet. What's wrong with him? I asked. A week ago, I was cleaning the bottom of the cage with the canister vacuum cleaner. I was using this cleaner without an attachment to the tube. When the telephone rang, I turned my head to pick the phone, continuing to vacuum in the cage, said my friend. And when I said hello into the phone, I heard a horrible noise of cocoa being sucked into the vacuum. Immediately, I put down the phone, ripped open the vacuum bag, and found Coco, shocked but still alive. Since she was covered in dust and dirt, I was shocked too. I grabbed it, ran into the bathroom, and ran cold water on it to clean it off. Since then, she just sort of sits and stares. Today's gospel tells us that the apostles were behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. They were traumatized by the arrest and the crucifixion of their master, and they were bewildered by the post-resurrection appearances. Many of us can identify with Coco and the apostles. Life has sucked us up, thrown cold water on us, and blown us away. Somewhere in the trauma, we have lost our song. Hence, we too need the daily anointing of the Holy Spirit to keep us singing the song of Christian witnessing through love. We heard from the Acts of the Apostles that the Holy Spirit came to Jesus' closest friends at the point when they were pretty low and transformed them. Jesus had been with them. He taught them. He had loved them. He had been killed brutally on the cross, much to the shock, surprise, and absolute joy of the followers. He then rose from the dead and walked among them again. But he did finally ascend, leaving them to be only with each other. And later, if we read in the Acts of the Apostles, it describes how the Holy Spirit empowered this holy Christian church to bear witness to Christ by sharing the love, the love and strong faith. As we can imagine, this scared bunch of disciples had no real clue about how they might, about, they might go about this important task. They went into hiding behind the closed doors and locked doors. They were scared, they were unsure. They were shutting out the rest of the world, which was hostile, persecuting and terrifying. They felt better clustered together in isolation and planning what to do next and where to go. So Jesus promises them the Holy Spirit because the Spirit will enable them to do what they couldn't do themselves. The same Spirit who hovered over the waters and brought forth creation in Genesis was now present in those first terrified followers of Jesus and transformed the cowards into heroes. Into their isolation, Jesus comes. Through closed doors, he walks and he tells them to get out of their isolation and fear. They were empowered to go and announce the good news of God's love in a way that could be heard by all. Indeed, Love is the language everybody understands. We are told that different people who were gathered heard it being proclaimed in their own language by the apostles. All walls were broken down. They became one family under God. This is what we celebrate on this feast of the Pentecost. It is a great day to ask the Holy Spirit to re-enkindle in us the spirit of new life and enthusiasm, the fire of God's love. Mother Teresa's life illustrates what Pentecost is. 
As a young sister, she belonged to a community of the Sisters of Loreto, which is a cloistered teaching order. One day, she was sent to a community school in India. During that time, the Hindus and the Muslims slaughtered each other in a civil war. For the first time in 15 years, Mother Teresa left the cloister just to find food for these girls. That day, over 5,000 had been killed and 15,000 wounded. Mother Teresa came back to a cloister, a changed woman. Out of fear, the sisters would not leave their convent. But Mother Teresa said she felt the Holy Spirit calling her to do something about what she had seen. So she did something unheard of. She asked to leave the cloister and to live among the people. Her turning point was when she found a woman dying on the street. Mother Teresa went in search for help, but there was none. No hospital, no place to care for this woman. So she took her into her own rented room and took care of her. Soon after, someone gave her a house. More and more, she gathered the poor and the dying from the streets. Then she, overwhelmed by the poor, but more volunteers came and more houses. And now we see a huge number of sisters of charity all over the world. That is how the Holy Spirit works. In her biography, Mother Teresa says she was like the apostles hiding behind closed doors of her cloister. She said Christ surprised her. He came through the locked doors and breathed the spirit on her. And she found a vocation within a vocation. The spirit is full of surprises. We have to admit that secularism and material comfort have muted the presence of God in the world. But all is not lost. History has shown that even in our worst moments, Jesus' ever-present spirit can speak through and raise up saints who turn things around. They can call, they call us back to the gospel and they give us hope. We are made by a power of love. Our lives were and are meant to be lived in that love. Come to think of it, we are not different from the ordinary men and women who gathered on that day of the Pentecost. Through our baptism and confirmation, each of us is filled and has been anointed with the exact Holy, same Holy Spirit. Such as that, just as the first followers of Jesus proclaimed the good news. We took our hold to do exactly the same thing today. Just as these men and women were transformed into energetic and outspoken witnesses of Jesus, so we too must each of us today do the same. But how do we do this? By discovering the redemptive power of love. When we discover that, we will be able to make this old world a new world. When love is the way we see each other with new lenses. When love is the way we actually treat each other with respect. When love is the way we know that God is the source of us all. The Holy Spirit will free us from these things that bind us. It will raise us into new life. So even though there are still troubles and difficulties in this world, we know the path to new life. Love is the way. For they shall know that you are my disciples if you love one another, says the Lord. Pentecost tells us that God is still present. He still speaks still calls and he still sends out disciples, you and I, to make a difference. We are spirit-filled people. Spirit-filled people speak words that heals. Spirit-filled people consoles. Spirit-filled people restores life and build people up instead of tearing them down. Spirit-filled people pass on the love of God to the people living around them in their acts of kindness mercy, and charity. Let us permit the Holy Spirit to direct our lives. Archbishop Romero once declared, and he reminds us 
as the gospel does today. That Pentecost is not just one day, but every day. Without breath, there is no life. Without the Spirit, the church is a field of dry bones. Happy feast to you all. To celebrate the birth of the church on this day of Pentecost, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, co-substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and petitions to the Lord on this day of Pentecost, asking him to be with us as he was with his disciples. For Pope Francis and the whole church, that empowered by the Spirit we may faithfully give witness to the Gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are guided by the Holy Spirit, spread the good news for evangelists... Sorry, let me write it again. For all who, guided by the Holy Spirit, spread the good news for evangelists, missionaries, preachers, composers, and writers, that God will inspire them to dynamically announce God's abiding presence and untiring love for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace throughout the world, that God will turn the hearts of world leaders from violence toward cooperation and mutual understanding in facing the challenges that confront all the human race. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a healing of racism, tribalism, and all divisions, that all nations and peoples may recognize the value and dignity that God has given each person, and that they may work together in the unity of Pentecost to bring forth the reign of God in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel alone and isolated, that God will console them. Let them experience God's presence in their homes and help others to connect with them and maintain a spirit of community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will fill them ease their pain, and restore them to wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For your prayers. In a moment of silence, we bring our own intentions before the Lord. Lord, hear us. 
Lord graciously hear us. That the Holy Spirit may heal our world from its brokenness, and that we may be renewed and made anew for the service of others and for love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. This be God for Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children, by uniting them to your only begotten Son, the same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, the heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty and Duncan our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to the core heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, O mighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the Lord of Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, 
When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.